I'm very excited about being here today with you folks and to share some things with you that I think you'll see will be very meaningful to you long term. I was in law school at the University of Georgia and a tragic thing happened with a group of Atlantans. Let me share that with you. There was a group of people in Atlanta that banded together to plan, raise funds for, and construct an art museum. This was a group of Atlantans that were outstanding people, obviously, if they were going to build an art museum. This group decided to take a trip to Europe and really view art museums in Europe to see what kind of art museum we wanted to build in Atlanta. That made a lot of sense. So over a hundred of these people chartered a jet and took off from Atlanta for a two-week trip headquartered in Paris. They made it to Paris and they toured art museums while they were there. In addition to touring art museums, they had some free time and a lot of them bought artwork. They bought paintings, some of them framed, they even bought statues. Everything they bought weighed a lot. Well, they brought it back to Orly Field in Paris when the day arrived to return to Atlanta. They stuffed the belly of the plane and everybody filed on the plane, got on the plane. It went down the runway and it never got over 10 feet off the ground. They lost power in one engine and it was too heavy and they crashed into a building across the street from Orly Field. As they crashed into the building, the plane caught fire and flamed up and everybody was killed. Well, this was a disaster like Atlanta had never had since the Civil War. And the thing that really made me think was how little planning so many people on that plane had done. They had not even planned for children. L let me share something that happened that I know about. There was one couple that had four children, minor children, and they were on the trip, both husband and wife. After the crash, the babysitter for those four children called a next door neighbor and said, who's going to relieve me? I've got to go home, and there's nobody here. This couple had no immediate family, so those children had to be placed in home. I know some of these children. They're now adults, obviously, and I know what happened because their parents had not planned. In addition to the children problems, the estate taxes that many of these estates had to pay because there had been no tax planning done. It just really made me think and start asking people, why don't you plan? And the most common answer I always got when I was asking people, why don't you plan, is that they said it's too complex. So what I decided I had to do was to simplify this matter. You know, so I, I said, let's don't make it so complex, let's simplify. So the way that I really addressed this was to try to say, what are the things you need to plan so that if you were on a plane like this, or whatever happens to you, that you've done the things you need to do. And what I did, I came up with 13 wealth management issues that I think you need to look at. Not every one of them will apply to you, but many of them will. So we've got it down to 13, and, and I want to identify those 13 to you in this overview. First, investments. You know, we all need to look at our investments. In economic cycles that, that we go through, we worry about our investments. So investments are, are, are very important. Number two, insurance. Life insurance. We'll talk about that in the life insurance section. It's so important. Disability insurance. Long-term care insurance. Liability insurance, personal liability insurance. Number three, borrowing money. You know, borrowing money is important to, for building an estate. 
for providing the liquidity you need when you can't sell something when you need funds. Number four, retirement planning. You know, retirement planning is vitally important. It's not just having enough, but how do you set it up so that the tax consequences are not so great? Number five, stock options and restricted stock. Now that doesn't apply to many of you, but when it applies, it's important. Number six is business succession planning. You know, it's amazing how many businesses in this country are owned by individuals that they do not even consider that there's going to be a time that they need to do something with that business. If not before, certainly when they die, they're going to need to do something with it. And it's just, it's really sad how many people do not pass on the wealth from their business to their family because they didn't plan for it. So business succession planning is important. Number seven is durable power of attorney. And who do you name as your durable power of attorney if during life you can't handle your own affairs, but you need somebody to handle them for you? Whether it's business affairs or whether it's health affairs. Number eight is gifting to children and descendants. <clears throat> gifting, <clears throat> excuse me, gifting to children and descendants. That's important. How do you transfer wealth during life to your children and descendants? Both from a control standpoint, if you're concerned about how they're going to handle anything you give to them, as well as the transfer taxes that we'll talk about. Gift taxes. Number nine is charitable gifting. During life, you know, it's important that, that as you accumulate wealth, that, that you share it if, if, if that's part of your plan. And you share it in a way that tax-wise you get the most benefits out of it, as well as possibly allowing your family to be involved in this gift. We'll talk about that. Ten is titling of assets. It's amazing to me how many people don't worry about titling of assets. I was with a couple in Hawaii uh, several months ago and, and, and I sat down with them and they said we have a great will it's taking care of everything tax wise and so forth and we looked at the will and it was a tremendous document and it really did do what they needed but then we started looking at their assets and all of their assets were in joint tenants with right of survivorship so the will doesn't even supersede that so when the first spouse dies, everything's going to the second spouse. Nothing in their will will have any meaning. So it's important how you title your assets. Eleven is who do you name as executor under your will. So when you die, you've got to have someone or some entity to handle your assets at your death. Who's that going to be? And are they capable of it? And what happens if they're older than you and they die before you do? Or they become ill? Or... Who, who succeeds them. And, 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 and 12 is distribution of wealth. You want to make sure that you distribute wealth so that it's most efficient for tax purposes as well as control purposes. And we'll talk about that. 13 and last is charitable gifting at death. And there's some things you can do. I, I'm going to talk about when we, we get into charitable gifting section, I'm going to talk about a value legacy that you leave your family and your children, not just a financial legacy. And how do you do that value legacy so that it's meaningful to your descendants as well as to whatever charity you want to benefit? And we'll talk about that. Those are the 13 wealth management issues. Now, I think it's important that you look at each one that could apply to 